Agreed. Warriors dominated game two, and I don't know what happened to Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, but there was a missing report for both of them after the first quarter, um, after the first half. I don't know what it is. Like, in the Miami Heat series, Jason Tatum just folds in the third quarter. I, I don't understand why. Like, he had so many turnovers once again. It's it's baffling how a guy who's that good and a team that's this good can just lose the ball over and over again. It really made no sense. Uh, the Warriors have had this recipe now for a decade where they go into halftime, whatever momentum they have or the other team has, and they just turn it on after halftime, Where, whether it's halftime adjustments or good motivational speeches or who knows what's right. going on in the locker room. But they come out in the third quarter and they just kick teams' butts. And they have done this for the longest time, and it continues this year. The third quarter has been dominated both games so far by the Warriors. Uh, and the fourth quarter has actually have been dominated by Boston in both games. I mean, it's been a pretty unique situation to have that. The difference was Golden State was up so much going into the fourth, it didn't matter. Right, actually, I think Boston cut the lead down like 10 or 12, actually, because this was a 30-point game and they finished at 19, obviously, with reserves. But maybe it's, it's good for Boston that they did finish kind of strong with their reserves in there. But you made a good point, because a lot of people just call it the third quarter. People don't understand Steve Kerr might be the best halftime adjustment guy in the NBA. Because I don't think he's motivating a fly on the wall, but I feel like his his adjustments, he sees something other coaches don't see in his team. And yeah, that's got to speak for something. I mean, I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what goes on there, but to ha- if it happens once in a while, so be it. But it seems to happen pretty consistently, both in the regular season and the playoffs, and it's been happening for years, where teams just don't, come out with the same fire as the Warriors in the third period. You can count on it almost every game. Uh, and, you know, even in game one, the, that game was, you know, that game was close. So I think Boston may even had the lead at halftime. They yep. came out and they were down, you know, 13 at the end of the third before, you know, the furious comeback they made. So, yeah, I mean, hats off to Steve Kerr for whatever he's doing to, to get them motivated and get them set up to, to win in the third. Uh, I don't know what happened to, to Tatum and Brown. You know, this is their first NBA Finals, nerves maybe. Uh, higher intensity defense, uh, who knows? But Tatum played great in the first half. Brown played okay in the first quarter. After that, not so much. Did you see the 2016 video they showed where Jalen Brown still had his high top and he was at the finals in Golden State saying, I have the old arena, so I'm going to be here one day. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I mean, he, he, he had a, a promising future, but he had no idea he was going to – no one knew he was going to actually do this, though. So shout out to him for working hard. Sometimes all it takes is a hard worker, more than sometimes more than talent. You can be tall all you want to, but if you don't want it, you may not get there. I think he's a pretty talented guy. He was number one overall pick, right? No, I don't think he was number one. He might be like oh, a, top, a lottery pick. Yeah, he was a top guy, but I don't know if he, I don't think he was number one. But he was definitely the fact he's come this far is pretty impressive, though. From that moment, that's six years ago. Yeah which is pretty impressive as well. 